So hello everybody. Look, week 10. That's the six guests we've had on Your Creative Self. There he is. I'm a story chiller and a, a senior art director at the Lego Agency since 2009. And um, what I've been doing at the Lego Agency for all those years are, you know, creating stories. I've been doing a lot of campaigning and uh, creating creative concepts. So that's what I get paid to do, coming up with the silly stories that, uh, that um, you know, tell stories to, to all the, the children in the world and make LEGO City look as cool as possible. I, I think right now this story is actually a perfect story for the time that we are in, because um, it, this, the story I will tell you about is about how to deal with the uns unsolvable, you know, how can you deal with problems that you can't fix. You know, in 2002, I was sentenced to blindness. I remember I was sitting uh, at the doctor's office and he looked at me and he said, Morten, I'm very sorry to, to say, but you have a disease that will slowly make you go blind and there's no cure. Back then, I, I couldn't I couldn't deal with it. It was simply too much for me, so I decided just to ignore it. I couldn't accept back then that I would one day become blind. You know, it wasn't the blindness that was my biggest problem. Um, it was actually my own inner voice that was constantly talking me down. You know, I asked myself a very important question after realizing that I had to do something. I was sitting there and I had no hope and I simply asked myself a question. And it is that if I can't change that I am going blind, can I somehow change the story uh, I tell myself about going blind? Can I change my perspective on losing something that I right now think is impossible to bear to lose? It uh, made me embark on a journey to figure out how can I, how, how can I change the story that I'm telling myself all the time. You know, I'm, I, I said to myself all the time, I won't be able to do anything. I can't work as an art director. I can't, you know, I have to give up. So uh, I really wanted to change my perspective, but uh, it was really difficult to do it in, in reality. I couldn't change. I kept repeating the old stories again and again in my head. So I asked myself, why is it so difficult to change this? unconscious or subconscious mind, it works almost like a computer. It has tons of programs and they just run automatically without us being aware of it. Uh, the way we program this subconscious mind is through repetition. So when we repeat something over and over again in the head, we create habits and they are like programs on the, on the hard drive. This is not new knowledge. I found this sentence again and again throughout the history and in all religions and philosophies. If we focus on our limitations and can't stop thinking about all our problems all the time, we repeat them in the mind and over time it becomes habits. It becomes a habit to feel in a certain way. It becomes our personality. You know, we people, we just suck at focusing our thoughts um, and our awareness because we are so occupied all the time by all the things we have to do in life and we totally forget to be present in this moment. If we want to change, we have to learn to focus and teach ourselves to think new thoughts and focus on what we want in life rather than what we don't want in life. And I gave myself four challenges in four months that should teach me to think like a new person, to change my per perspective on the situation that I was in. You know, for 30 days, I decided that I, I would challenge my inner negative thought machine. All the, the inner voices that com complained and was unhappy and labeled things as bad and so on. So every time I just go that I, you know, had a negative thought and my autopilot just was thinking something negative, I had to say, stop, swap thought. And then I would have five seconds to change to a conscious positive thought. And one of the things that I uh, had to deal with now was that I had to go to to work by bus and a trip that normally took 
30 minutes now took one and a half hour and i hated hated that bus in the rain i uh, noticed that i was pulling my raincoat up to my neck and i suddenly remembered that my lovely wife had, last week had given me this raincoat because she felt compassion and um she, she felt sorry for me standing there in, in the pouring rain. So I suddenly felt a huge gratitude and love for my wife because she did this for me. And, and um, I shifted my focus from anger to gratefulness all of this in, in a couple of seconds. And uh, another thing that I noticed was that, you know, I had now one and a half hour for myself to read and to meditate in, in, in my own huge limousine. The city bus experienced, the experience became my best moments uh, in the day. And the funny thing is that I hadn't changed the problem or the situation. I had only changed my perspective on the situation. I learned that we, we have a choice, we always have a choice, whether something is good or bad is a matter of perspective. It's simply something we decide ourselves. The second challenge was challenging fear and worry. Skydiving was on the top five list of things that I long ago had decided never to do. But I wanted to notice how many times my inner voice would try to talk me out of jumping. And every time my inner voice tried to do that, I would say, stop, swap thought. But you know, so many times in my life, I'd said no to things because I was afraid and I you know, didn't know how it would turn out. And um, I, I, now I started to reprogram the way that I would go into challenges. I felt it was extremely embarrassed, uh, embarrassing to uh, tell people that I was visually impaired uh, for some reason, because it, it, was, uh, it wasn't normal. You know, I, I haven't been visually impaired my whole life, so it was, uh, it was an uncomfortable feeling. You know, as often as possible, I do something that is really uncomfortable. The limitations that I will meet in life are those that I create in my mind. They're often not real. The fourth challenge was to share this experience with the world. So I became a public speaker and I wrote the book. But you know, how can this solve or change my blindness? And it can't, but I can decide to change my story about my, my blindness and my perspective on it. I, and I can decide to grow bigger than this problem. Let's say two minutes. If you take your a pen and a piece of paper, and then try to think about three limiting thoughts that you often have, you know, maybe even today, things that you say to yourself. And then when you have nailed that, maybe it can be only one, but when you have that sentence and you write it down, it's important that you write it down, then try to flip it, you know, see it from the positive side. One of the thoughts that I always have is, if I take time off from school, I lose the significant time that I need to get all the things that I want done. So if I take a break, that's me walking away from more time that I could have used to work towards what I need to do. But then on a more positive note, if I take the time off, I can regenerate my energy and come back with a better mindset and a more productive um, approach. Yeah, it's a great example. But I wrote down that I don't deserve the things I want. So having to do with worthiness. Um, but then I wrote down, I do deserve the things I want. And as an addition, I'm the one who's going to go get them. It's an exercise in being consciously aware of what you are thinking and then making a choice to change that narrative and change the story inside your head. That's really great. And it's, and it's so useful that you kind of you found these tools which really helped you but anybody can make use of these things can't they the most important thing is the effort uh -huh. you know and the dialogue that you have when you notice that you actually failed every time i was standing there and i was complaining about something in in my mind i would just you know create this inner enormous red uh, pounding loving heart in my vision in my sort of uh, visual imagination I would see that and it represented love and gratitude and all those good feelings and when I saw that I could easily shift it to something nice you know I talked about my wife and the raincoat I have a lot of 
experiences with people coming up to me and say, oh, if it was me, if I was, if I knew I was going blind, I would, I would die. Like, you know, all the horrors that they tell about. And I said, no, you wouldn't. You, you would, you would manage, you know, we all will manage whatever we, we are thrown, you know, all the curveballs that we meet in life. And uh, it's just, it's just, you know, we have the choice to deal with whatever comes our way. So I don't, I don't, I don't think that much about the future. I think about what I do right now that can make the next now a good now. You know, I have a choice again. If uh, I can, I can tell myself a story in my head that I am being pitied right now, or I can tell myself a story that there's someone in front of me who just have an enormous amount of love and want the best for me. If I try to imagine how my life could be like if I don't have any limitations. How would it then be? And then I, I did, I, uh, I implemented that imagination in my meditations. And that is what I do at my job at the Lego group, because I have nothing. I have a white piece of paper, white uh, piece of paper, and someone says, come up with something. And then I'm using my, you know, I'm using that same ability in my job. And I say, can I use that in my life? I just trust and stick to the idea that I want this to happen somehow. And then I'll open my heart and my perceptions and my eyes to what shows up in life and say yes to it. But you can start focusing on, okay, how do I get out of this? You know, and still smile and still have this attitude. You, I think that that's what I mean by accepting the moment as if you have chosen it and then figure out how to, to get from, from there. I can fall in love with this crappy situation because it taught me something thank you everyone that was just, it was so uh, rewarding for me to to be here it's uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity well we're very grateful you came but if you guys want to unmute yourselves and make a happy noise for more that'd be nice thank you Yay. thank you thank you thank you thank you thanks a lot Bon. cheers